I knew it. The glasses are too much, aren't they? It's the last time I'm listening to Koof's advice. Good morning. Jean Prevert here. So, we were talking the other night, and it got me to thinking, why must we make fun of the old gods? What if they're still listening? They could be watching our every move. It doesn't seem to me that Jupiter has died, and yet they say the old gods are merely dreams. Look outside! Even after we wake from such dreams, nature holds every sign of the gods' presence. Mountains, they show profiles of citadels, of castles and churches. And the Vignamala is, to me, the headdress of Sybil. Who's to say that Pan doesn't wander the forest at night, blowing into the hollow trunks of trees and stopping the holes with his fingers? And I've always thought that Io was present in the great waterfalls of the world. The world is wonderful and terrible and utterly unexplainable. And yet the myths and the gods and the legends of every people strive for answers. You cannot tell me that the golden apple of Discordia and the fruit of knowledge in the Garden of Eden do not bear some similarity in the creation of mankind. But because man relies so much on his logic, he can have no belief in these stories. I say, if he were to listen and open his mind, he would find answers undreamt of. Or... If he does dream of them, as they say he must, maybe he could find his dreams to be true and to open his mind to all of the possibilities. I'm going to leave you with a poem by Emily Dickinson. I had no time to hate because the grave would hinder me and life was not so ample I should finish enmity. Nor had I time to love, but since some industry must be, the little toil of love, I thought, was large enough for me.